beautiful. We'll take this next caller. Caller, welcome to the show. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hello, I'm Salam Aleichem. This is Eliza. I'm calling from Chicago in the U.S. Hi, welcome to the show. And welcome. Thank you. Um, Shalom, Rav. Uh, also, I want to thank you both so, so much for everything you've done. It helped me a lot through my spiritual path. And the thing is, I actually was born to a Muslim Iraqi family, and I came to the U.S. I converted to Judaism, so which is very unusual. And... I understand, like, the question, just to be precise, is I had to convert through the Masorti conservative uh, movement because the Orthodox was a little hard with me here. They had requirements that were beyond my financial like, capacity. They want me to move to a certain neighborhood, so they will be watching me all the time, and, you know. But then the close one to me is the conservative, and they are very... They keep the halakha, they are like more orthodox, I would say, than conservative. But they have very open like arms and they don't ask me where I came from or such so things. But the thing is, given my background, because I came from a Muslim family from Iraq, like culturally Arabic. So I'll, I'll, I've been always asked like like about my religion. I'm, of course, I'm Jewish, but then they say, so what... What is your family name? Usually the Sephardi or the Mizrahim. So immediately when I say it, it gives it away. And always people like ask me like, oh, so you're not really Jewish. Even some Jews, you know. And I'm kind of conflicted because I feel I'm super Jewish since I was a child. And obviously otherwise why would I convert? And I do have some ancestry on my dad's side, but it's distant on their maternal lineage. So in the eyes of so many Jewish people, I'm not really Jewish because I was not born to a Jewish family and because I was, you know, entered uh, the nation through a conservative uh, conversion because nobody knows how hard the Orthodox made it for me, although I don't really like using conservative Orthodox Jews are Jews and we're all all Jews. Um, So I have this identity crisis between you know, like like you said, Ralph, like political stuff messed up religion. So it's hard to be like Middle Eastern Arabic and at the same time Jewish like it used to be back in the days after the reestablishment of the state of Israel. Now you have to be just like Jewish or, you know, like American Jew or something. I'm sorry, I'm just ranting. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell so me, I, tell me, my dear sister, what what's your question? Yeah, sorry, I, I just... Uh, no, 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 I know there's so much, and your heart is very heavy, and I can hear that you're practically in tears. Even though I can't see you, I can hear that your heart is very heavy. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just so sorry for all the difficulties you've gone through, because I can hear your pain. But please do continue. I want to understand your question only because I, I don't want to misunderstand the crux of your question, and I know you yeah. want me to give you an honest, straight answer, and that that's all. Yeah. So, but bless you. Continue. Thank you so much, Rav. So, um, I've been following you a lot, Rav, and I have so much, so much respect to you. And you follow authentic Torah Judaism. So, I don't want to put you in a position to ask you, is my conversion authentic or not or considered? But the thing is, Am I seriously considered Jewish or not? Like, just this general idea, because I'm torn apart. Like, you know, my family is Muslim, but people still see me as Muslim. But I, I'm not. I'm Jewish with all my heart, my soul, everything. I love a lot to be Jewish. But then a lot of, you know, the Orthodox, they don't consider me Jewish, but the conservative do. So, um, and. I cannot move to places, you know, to live with the Orthodox community because it's far and expensive for me here in Chicago. So, I like, what am I supposed to do to become, like, an authentic Jewish who is considered really Jewish? <laughs> I'm sorry if the question is confusing. Thank you so much for uh, calling in. And if I, if I, if I say the wrong thing, if I, if. I, I pray that God will give me 
the Almighty gives wisdom. I hope that will give me wisdom to answer you properly. Uh, first point is that um, Jews in the Islamic world, rabbis in the Islamic world, Orthodox rabbis, do not convert Muslims. Let's just start there. That means we can't, if a Muslim, there is, there are not many Muslims who convert to Judaism and not many Jews who convert to Islam. There's a lot of Jews who convert to Christianity, a lot of Christians who convert to Judaism, there's a lot of Christians who convert to Islam, but Jews, there are some, but it's, it's usually unheard of. But uh, rabbis in the Muslim world, like myself, or rabbis in Morocco, will, or in Turkey, will just not perform a conversion at all, period. If, if someone wishes to go to a Christian country like the United States, they it's a free world, the person can do what they want, but we don't encourage it. We don't encourage it because we really, rabbis are looking out for you. And what does that mean? I, I, I presume you want to understand what a rabbi is doing and why, do, why is it difficult to convert. Because we, we, Judaism is a non-proselytizing religion. A person can convert to Judaism, but it's not easy. The reason it's not easy and the reason we don't proselytize is very simple. We do not believe that if you're not Jewish, you're going to go to hell. Christians do. Christians believe if you're not a Christian, you're definitely going to hell. The general consensus in Islam is if you're not a Muslim, you're going to go to hell. There are some Muslims, based on a passage I'm not going to go into, that believe that a, a, a person who worshiped one true God could be saved through God's mercy. But the general consensus is that non-Muslims are going to go to hell. But we, this is where Judaism is quite different, and that is that any righteous person who's a child of God, who keeps the seven Noahide laws, has a place in the world to come, and you don't have to become Jewish. And you're creating the image of Hashem. Why become Jewish? Because Jews can't use the gasoline that people put inside of a car. We need jet fuel. We, need, we have 613 commandments because in order to, to, uh, to be an or la gaim, a light to the world, we have, to, we have to keep many mitzvot. So, a rabbi who would take you, for example, and you want the straight answer, right? You don't want me to, if you're still on the phone, I presume you don't want me to gl gloss over this. You want it straight, right? Okay. So, so for a person who's, who's a Ben Noach or a Bat Noach, a person who's righteous, a righteous child of God, but is not Jewish, they, don't, they can drive on the Sabbath eating a oh, a sandwich made out of horse meat, and there's no sin involved. It's not haram. It's not no sin. There's no avera. It, once you convert to Judaism properly through Jewish halacha, and and one ex, ha, accepts the Torah called Kabbalah Zatayra, this is the central feature of conversion, and immerses in the mikvah. That conversion can never be undone. Once a person converts to Judaism, they can't convert out. Now, of course, God forbid a person who converts to Judaism can, God forbid, be, leave the faith. But if they do that, they're in very serious trouble and it would have been better if they never converted. This is the key to your question. And that is that if you take somebody who's in God's eyes is righteous, who has a place in the world to come, who keeps... All the Noahide laws, that means the laws prior to Mount Sinai that our, that our forefathers kept, so that person has a place in the world to come. And that person is not required to keep Shabbos. And they're not required to sit in the sukkah. And there's no sin if they eat horse meat on Yom Kippur. Forgive me, I'm, I'm just, I want to be very direct. So rabbis are, in, are petrified, just... I'm speaking for, I'm not the spokesman for the Jewish people in the world. I want to make that point. But I'm, I'm giving you 
the 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 best answer. I, I'm giving you the correct answer. Rabbis are absolutely terrified of converting people. Now, of course, if someone wishes to convert, there's nothing a rabbi can ever do to stop that process because if a person wishes to be a Jew, we, in our tradition, they already have a Jewish soul and they will do anything to be a Jew. And if you ask people who convert, they'll tell you, I have to be Jewish and that's the end of it. I don't need to be Jewish to be saved, but I, I, this is who I am. Generally, I have found, in my experience, I don't have any empirical evidence, but the anecdotal evidence of being a rabbi for more than 35 years is that a great number of people who convert to Judaism later on find out that they were always Jewish the whole time, had a Jewish soul. So the, the key point is the following. Orthodox rabbis are trying to protect people. Okay, I'm not, I'm not the spokesman for the conservative movement, but and, and although there are some conservative rabbis who I know personally who are deeply religious and completely observant of Torah and insist that others are observant of Torah, there are very few of them. And the conservatives that are watching this, if you're angry at me, I can't make up stuff. The, the, there's a problem when you have a conservative rabbi in the state of California on Passover who's very well known, who decided on Passover to get up, and his sermon was to declare, and I lectured in his synagogue, to declare that the Exodus never even happened. It's a myth. It's unbelievable. The reality is that today, it, it is, the conservative movement has jettisoned uh, the core tenets, core tenets of the Jewish faith. Uh, in fact, what the, the one of the founders of the conservative Judaism, uh, Solomon Schachter, a reader at Cambridge University, a uh, hundred years ago, said that um, higher criticism, documentary hypothesis, is higher anti-Semitism. He said this with his own mouth, and he was a religious Jew. I didn't. I don't agree with him and what he was. But he was a religious Jew and said that documentary hypothesis, the notion, the Torah, the Torah, the Holy Torah, God forbid, was authored by multiple authors and eventually was edited and put together, this filth that has now become pervasive in the academic world, he said this is higher anti-Semitism. And there's a reason for it. I'm not going to go into it now. But it is. It's, it's, this, this, is um, it's, 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 this is far more... This is far darker than even you imagine. So, going back to everything, let's disassemble everything here. The issue in the conservative movement is that there's everyone changed. Today, if you go to a, a divinity school in the conservative movement, Jewish Theological Seminary in New York, they teach documentary hypothesis as though it's fact. And they teach that Isaiah was written by multiple authors. This is something that Solomon Schechter 100 years ago would have vomited on. If I insulted you, I'm sorry, but this is not the right show for you. I, I have to say the truth. The conservative movement has rejected, it over just the last century, fundamental... It's not, you know, people think, ah, oh, conservative temple, men and women sit together, and orthodox women sit separately. That's the least, in, that's the least interesting difference. That's just because it's very striking that in an orthodox synagogue, men and women don't pray together, mixed. We pray separately. So we go, whoa! You know, conservative is egalitarian, orthodox is not, and I'm conservative. That is the least interesting and least important difference. That's, that's minor. I'm not saying it's not important. That's the least important issue. The most important issue, unfortunately, I say this, I, I say this weeping in my heart. Boy, this is an emotional show. <laughs> I hope someone has a light question after this one. But unfortunately... You know, there's a joke reform Jews say about conservative Jews. And as they say, there's no such thing as a conservative Jew. There are only conservative rabbis. Which means that today, in, in most conservative synagogues, let's say in the United States, as it turns out, the rabbi may very well be completely observant, but the, the congregants, there are some that are, but it's, uh, I mean, there are, there are, Conservative congregations, uh, 
that are, and they voted at Jewish Thiele, they voted to ordain gay lesbian rabbis. I, I don't care what you feel about the issue, but you, you, if, if someone wants to say they don't believe in the Torah, I wish you would believe in the Torah is from God, of course. But I, I, it is dishonest to say that the Torah tells us that this relationship, the act, not the desire, the act is a sin. You can't, you could say, if you wish, I hope you don't, and God surely hope you don't, you could say that I don't believe the Torah is from God, and I think it's okay, and I, I think it doesn't make a difference if I eat pork or not, but you can't say the author of the Torah said, it, believe that it's okay to eat pork, okay? It just, you can't say that the Torah condones two men getting married or a rabbi being actively... It's a reality. If I get shot to pieces because now it's sort of culturally not in vogue, what am I going to do? Get another job? I have to tell the truth. So I'm, one, I, I'm trying to just get to this point. It's not a personal issue with the conservative one. It breaks the heart. But unfortunately... It is widely thought, oh, there are conservative Jews, I know them, that are completely observant. But the, the conservative movement, which let's say there are a million members in America, I don't really know the number, it's sort of going down now, there, there's a little bit of a struggle there. But if you don't know this, then you're not living in a real world. The vast majority of members of the conservative movement are not Torah observant. They aren't. Um, and the rabbis, the vast majority of them, do not... The, I, I had a show. Uh, rabbis tell rabbis tell the congregants that the Torah is, was not given by God to Moses, but it was written later on. And Daniel was not written during the Babel, and Exabo was written during the time of Hanukkah. They say this. This is... Uh, so therefore, the problem here is that in order to convert to Judaism, it doesn't make a difference what your background is. There are, for a woman today, there are two things. One of them is Kabbalah Satayra. That means accepting that the Torah is binding is from Hashem, of course. And committing yourself to live that way. And the other is to go to the mikvah. The time of the temple, there was an offering board as well. And men, of course, must be circumcised. So the problem, the, so the problem, the issue is, is that the conservative movement is not teaching, promulgating that one must keep the entire Torah, and it's forbidden to drive on Shabbos. The conservative movement, it was a huge mistake, and today I know many conservative rabbis who regret this terribly. We're going back now uh, 50, 60 years ago, where they said, well, you can drive on Shabbos, to synagogue, which was a disaster because it destroyed the Jewish community because now you can live out in the suburbs and drive. So that's the problem. The problem is that an essential feature of the conversion, namely, it's not the mikvah. We can use the same mikvah. That's not the difference. The problem is that the Orthodox rabbi is trying to protect you. Again, this doesn't mean the serve rabbis are bad people. They're good kids. They're the best kids. They went to Camp Ramah. They went to, you know, they, they, and so on. They, this is what they're taught at Jewish Theological Seminary. This is taught, I've been there. I've lectured there. I know what goes on. This is taught as absolute fact. And I will say, and if conservative rabbis are angry at me or they're angry at me, they, they teach it not only as fact that the Torah is not from God, I mean, literally, the five books of Moses is not from God, and Isaiah is not all from the prophet Isaiah, who lived 2,700 years ago. And they teach this fact. They don't say, look, there are two opinions. I mean, at least do that. They don't. And so what are we to do? They, they, don't, they didn't consult anybody. That's the problem. That's the problem. It has nothing to do with your background, where, what your background was. The problem is that, that a real conversion... The centerpiece of a real conversion is to accept the Torah. And just a caveat to maybe help you understand this point a little bit better is that, in a sense, we're all converts. Meaning, you go, what do you mean? I was born Jewish, but, um, but the Jewish people, we stood at Mount Sinai. Of course, we were circumcised, we immersed in a mikvah, and then we said Nasev at Mount Sinai.
That means the Jews who are known to be Jewish today, self-identifying Jews, who can trace themselves back to Mount Sinai, which I can, I'm a descendant of Aaron, the brother of Moses, a blessed, a blessed memory, we went through that conversion process at Mount Sinai. So therefore, somebody today who wishes to convert to Judaism, they're simply, what they're really doing is they're going through the conversion that we did already. The only thing is we did it 3,300 years ago, and people today are doing it now. I always say this, I, I just say it to anyone, anyone who feels in any way connected in this way, please study your genealogy. Really do that, because... <laughs> I, I don't believe in UFOs and conspiracy theories. Um, that stuff makes me nauseous. I just, I'm allergic to it. I don't go for that stuff. But this, you know, three and a half decades of being a rabbi, I've seen it over and over again that people who are involved in the conversion process, so on, they eventually find out this is a family secret. They were always Jewish anyway. You can hire a professional genealogist who specializes in a certain region of the world, and you might discover that your mother's mother's mother is Jewish. And it is the mother, the biological mother. Adoption does not convey Jewish identity, and it would not convey what tribe you're from. So your biological mother's mother's mother, if that could be determined that she was Jewish, then you're as Jewish as I am. And... People don't, in my opinion, adequately research this point. So the answer is that Orthodox rabbis in Chicago, anywhere in the world, in the Christian world, because in the Muslim world we don't do conversions. If, a, if in Turkey someone wants to convert, the rabbis in Turkey will tell them, go somewhere else, we won't touch it. In Syria there's no Jews left, but when they were, they wouldn't touch it. But I would just say that the issue really is, if you want to know what it is, it's not like, oh, you're not on our team. You went and bought, you, you went and bought your stuff at, at another store, so we, we don't want to help you. It's not a power issue. Are there, incidentally, rabbis who cor are corrupt? And, yeah, of course, there's idiots out there who do terrible things, who invalidate perfectly legitimate conversions. There's a very serious problem that's going on, and I pray to God it will stop, this problem will end. But that's not your question. The Orthodox rabbi, of course they want you to live nearest walking distance of a synagogue. Imagine for a moment that a rabbi would say, sure, you don't want to live within walking distance of a synagogue, not a problem, you can live wherever you want. And then the person is getting into a car, starting the car on Shabbos, the Torah says, You're not allowed to kindle a fire on the Sabbath day. You start a car. Look, let's keep it real simple, okay? Just rudimentary car. What makes a car drive? It's an ignition that ignites gasoline that makes the pistons move and makes the car drive. It's a clear violation of Shabbos. So what should the rabbi do? He should let you... Please, please don't be offended. I say this from heart. What should a rabbi do? He should go and turn you into a sinner? You're much, it's much better off that you should be righteous, a child of Hashem, a daughter of Noah, and you shouldn't be a sinner. If the ra Orthodox rabbi will convert someone who can't possibly keep the Sabbath because they don't live within walking distance of a synagogue, so then... The rabbi has just taken a, a completely righteous person who is completely observant and turned them into a sinner. That's the, a rabbi's worst nightmare, and that is the issue. And as I say to anybody, I say this to anybody, I don't care what religion or no religion, do study, research your genealogy. Make sure if you get a genealogist, I think there's a website, myheritage.com. I could be off on that. You can research who's a proper genealogist. Uh, you can contact the Diaspora Museum in Tel Aviv to find out who specializes in your region of the world. And then it's not an expensive matter, but try to find out if you're, in fact, of, of Jewish ancestry, mother's mother's mother, your father, grandfather is not relevant. If your mother's mother's mother is Jewish, it doesn't make a difference if your father's father's father was the, the, the Pope. It doesn't make you as Jewish as I am. So, and I shem shalom bless you and guide you, and also I can hear in your voice that you're in a considerable amount of pain. And Hashem should only... 
heal your pain because the Almighty is the only true physician. He is the only one who heals. He is the only one who binds up the depressed. He is the only one who lifts up those who are falling. Hashem should raise you up and strengthen you and bless you in your walk with Hashem. Thank you so much for joining us on air. But if we look for the religion which has been revealed uh, by God, we have to move a little bit further west and we go to the Middle East. And we see that there we have uh, emerging three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and uh, Islam. Now, could I, have, could I be a, a Jew then? Well, first, I couldn't be a Jew because to be a Jew, one has to be born in the system. And uh, Judaism can refer to the religion or it can also refer to the social and cultural identity. Uh, as far as it refers to the social and cultural identity, by definition, I couldn't be a Jew. But whereas re it refers to the religion, if that is the religion of Moses, then I do declare that the religion of Moses uh, has its obvious basis in a revelation that came to him from God. And what about later Judaism? What about Judaism in its present form? Has that remained the religion as it was revealed? Do we have today the Torah as it was given to the prophet Moses, peace be upon him? If we did, then that would commend itself as a belief that we should hold, because here we would have not a religion made by man, but something revealed by the Almighty God. However, uh, Bible commentaries and, and notes uh, unabashedly proclaim that uh, the uh, five books within the Bible, which is uh, referred to as the Torah, uh, or the Law of Moses, actually was compiled long after Moses. Uh, Moses, uh, on whom be peace, uh, passed away in the 12th uh, century. But uh, the books which now bear his name were written about 600 years after him. If that is the case then, and there is good evidence to support that this is the case, then we no longer have the original teachings as they were left by the Prophet Moses on whom be peace. But we have a religion known as Judaism, which to a large extent owes uh, many of its ideas and principles uh, to the Jewish priests and scribes who wrote down the, New T the Old Testament, uh, in particular the books of Moses, uh, in the 6th century. Yeah, BC. But uh, on the other hand, why am I a Muslim? I am a Muslim because having considered Islam, I couldn't resist believing that Islam is the truth. In fact, uh, Islam is based on a message which is said to be revealed to an Arabian prophet some 1400 years ago. And uh, an intelligent, reasonable mind would want to find out, is this really a book from God? If we have already said that religion, in order to be true, must come from God, is the Quran a book that can commend itself to be the Word of God? I think so for many reasons. First. The man who brought this book to the world could not read or write himself, and so he was incapable of uh, producing a paragraph, much less a book, much less a book like the Glorious Quran, which is a compendium of um, uh, rules and uh, principles that govern all phases of human endeavor. Uh, second, the man himself was obviously sincere in what he preached. He bore persecutions uh, in order to carry on his message. He would not have done that unless he was really sincere. Did he have anything to gain by lying to people, saying that the book came to him from God, whereas it was his very own. We see that he had nothing to gain. In fact, uh, he gave up his wealth. He gave up power. Uh, he was offered wealth and power, but he refused to accept those uh, in order that he might carry on his message and not compromise his message in any way. Uh, historians of religion would have to conclude that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sincere, as William Montgomery Watt, a, a, an Orientalist writer on Islam himself, has concluded. But uh, more than that, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, couldn't have been sincerely wrong. Uh, the book really had to come from an outside source, because the book speaks to him and even commands him and criticizes him on occasion. Uh, moreover, the book reports uh, information from history that were not known to the Prophet's contemporaries, and that information 
turns out to be true. Moreover, the book speaks about the future, and then the future unfolds exactly as described in that book. Furthermore, the book describes physical phenomena that we can observe, and modern scientists say that they are amazed at the accuracy of these statements, which were already made way back in the 7th century, at a time when some of this information could not have been discovered, given the technological level of advancement of the day. As some of the descriptions of the development of the human embryo, for example, could not be described unless somebody was working with a microscope. Uh, Dr. Keith Moore at the University of Toronto says that for this reason he is amazed at the accuracy of these statements which were already made in the 7th century AD. For all of these reasons and for more, I couldn't resist being a Muslim. Moreover, the Quran has to be true because it says that if you think that this is not really the word of God, you should be able to do two things. First, you should be able to find much discrepancy in the book, proving that it is a human document. Nobody has been able to do that. Second, if you think that it is a human production, then by implication, other humans can produce something like it. So just produce something like it to show that it is possible for humans humans to do it. And nobody has been able to do that. Now you might find it to be a little bit strange. <laughs> What's so impossible about writing a book? Millions of books have been written and published and no one is able to write a book like the Quran. Eh, impossible though as it sounds, that indeed is the miracle. Why is it impossible to write a book like the Quran? Because the Quran already said that it is. And this would prove that this book really is what it said it was, the word of God. So why am I a Muslim? I'm a Muslim for two reasons. First, having considered uh, all the other ideas out there, I realized first I couldn't be an atheist, I couldn't be an agnostic. Second, I couldn't adopt any other religion because I've considered the religions of China, the religions of Japan, the religions of India, and uh, the religions, some of which originated out of Palestine. I couldn't be any of those. Finally, having considered the religion of Islam, I couldn't resist being a Muslim. That is the faith that, that I commend to all of you. Thank you very much.